Welcome back to the channel. My name is Parker Dickey and I'm currently making this video at like 21, 2200. So I'm going to keep it down. That's why I got this microphone attached to my small rig handle for my camera and, you know, keeping it pretty low key. I wanted to talk about some things that I've learned through, you know, lessons and through teachings and that I've also learned through, you know, experience and some mistakes and, you know, some trials and stuff just recently. And it all stems back to you are your own worst enemy. And for all of you that haven't seen this video, I'm going to pop it up on the screen right now. This video on the Prophet Street channel, uh, go watch it. If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it. And my mentor, and my beloved brother in Christ, also, you know, technically a mentor as well. Uh, they both go in on how you are your own worst enemy. And it's the absolute truth. I am my worst enemy. And you are your own worst enemy. The problem starts when you start blaming everyone. Because there are billions and trillions and quite honestly, infinite things to blame in this life. You can go to blaming your family, blaming the generations before you, blaming the country, blaming societal uh, structures, societal blockages, societal oppression. You know, you could blame culture, you could blame social media, you can blame where you were born, you could blame your race, you could blame your age, you could blame your sex. There's millions of things to blame it on. And some people go their whole life blaming all of those things, looking for the real right thing to blame. And that's why a lot of people don't end up being fulfilled because they don't know where the leak is at in their life. And they sink. And that's the beauty of wisdom and letting God help you plug that leak because he knows exactly where the leak is coming from and once he reveals that to you then you can become aware of that leaks coming from you can become aware of where that leaks coming from and it's within yourself it's you you know in that video you are your own worst enemy from Stephen guy on prophet street you know they talk about how the devil is just like an annoying fly an annoying gnat he doesn't have any real power. He doesn't have any real ability to change. He doesn't have the ability to change the will of God. He doesn't have the ability to do anything that the Lord hasn't willed for him to do. And he's just like a pesky little gnat, you know, just like a nagger all day. He's just nagging. But it's ultimately you that makes these decisions. And now... You know, there are reasons as to why you are where you are and why your family life is the way it was. But there comes a point where those reasons need to stop being excuses. And those reasons just need to stay reasons. But you need to ultimately have the humility to look in yourself and be like, you know what, I'm going to take this upon myself and I'm going to put the blame on me. And with putting the blame on me, I'm also going to put the power to start writing this story of mine differently, also in my hands. I'm going to stop letting all these other people write it for me. Oh, man, I just, man, if I, if I could, man, if, if they weren't doing this, I'd be doing if they If it wasn't for them, man, I'd be. Man, you're letting other people write your story while you sit idly as your pen is used in a way where it's not edifying to Christ. It's not building anything. If you're busy blaming, you can't be building. You know, if you're not building, you're probably blaming. And quit blaming your dad. You know, quit blaming your mom. Quit blaming your, your ex-girlfriend. Golly, that's the worst of all of these reasons. <laughs> you know, the mom and dad, I get that. But move past that. But your girlfriends and stuff, golly, if they're getting you hung up, you probably had sex before marriage and you got soul tied to a little witch and you're struggling to get past that. But that's on you and you got to put the blame on you. 
That's your fault. You shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have been sleeping around before marriage. Yeah, should you have a fam should you have had a family that knew the Lord, loved God, and taught you these things and passed down wisdom? Yeah. But ultimately nobody forced you to have premarital sex. So that's on you. And you know, a lot of people are competitive. They want to compete against others. You know, I'm in the military, I'm in the United States Army here at Fort Meade, fifty fifth Signal Company, first platoon. And we do physical stuff all the time. And I, I love that the Lord has given me a, a non-competitive spirit when it comes to others. Uh, you know, the world and all these things tried to make me competitive against others, but I hated, the, I hated the thought of humiliating somebody. I never liked that because I hated when it happened to me. So then when it would happen to me, I wouldn't want somebody to feel like how I felt. So even if I were to win in something, I would do my best to not let the person that lost uh, feel nasty about it. I wouldn't want them to get angry at me. But, you know, now after my faith is developing and after my heart has been renewed and I have a deeper understanding on these things, I have seen others competing against one another. And it's not holy. And it's, it, it's, it's not pleasant. And I don't like that. I don't like seeing that. And the issue with competing against others is there's never a perfect contender. There's never a perfect opponent for you. If you lose, you'll blame that person. You'll blame, rather, you make excuses. If you win, you know, you think because you're superior. And that they stood no chance and that you were always going to win. But the real opponent that you need to be competitive against is yourself. When I'm doing all these physical events and these trainings and these competitions, competitions, I'm competing against myself. I don't care if I beat that guy in front of me and I don't care if I'm ahead of the guy behind me i don't care if i'm slower i don't care i don't care i just want to do better than i did before and if i'm in front of you then so be it if i'm behind you then so be it but i don't want you to think i'm competing against you just because you're competing against me imagine if you were in the world and some of you might be but for me i have to try to imagine because i'm not anymore praise god but if i was competing against somebody in my <laughs> And I crossed the finish line right before him. <laughs> and I'm boasting. I'm freaking showing off. I think I'm all that. And then that person comes up to me and says, good job, man. Great job. I was trying my best to beat my old score. And, you know, but, man, you're doing great. Great job. <laughs> you know, I do that. I, I'm that guy nowadays, you know. I see people trying to compete and all this stuff. And I just... Gas them up a little bit. I just feed into it. Hey, man, great job, dude. You did it great. And even the guys behind me. You know, I finished some stuff in a decently fast pace a while back. And there were guys finishing after me. And, hey, Dickie, what time did you get? Oh, I got this. They're like, oh, I got this. I'm like, bro, that's very good. Like, be proud of that. Like, great job, dude. I saw you busting butt, dude. That's awesome. Way to get way to get it done. Way to keep firing. Way to keep going, man. Great job. And I I dissolve competition now. Like my goal is to is to dissolve competition, and I love it. I love it because you dictate the space. When you're not competing against others, there's not a competitive environment. There's not a comparative environment. There's a cooperative environment. A compat, like you know, a companionship, a, a, you know, an environment that breathes support, encouragement, building, you know, healing, whatever, whatever words you want to put on it, and that's what I want to bring, you know, because the war is really within myself, and I'm not worried about all these other people. I know that my competition is all day, it's nonstop. 
So why would I add more competition? Why would I add more strife? Why would I add more stress? Why would I add more opponents? Why would I add more stumbling blocks, obstacles, mountains? Why? You've got a lot to deal with. You've got enough to deal with with yourself, with your life, your trauma, your relationships, your, your bad habits, your sin, everything under the sun. You've got a lot to deal with, and it's going to take a lifetime to deal with it. Praise God. However long that is. That's why we're here, ain't it? To get through God's crucible, to get through God's basic eternity training. B-E-T. <laughs> basic eternal training is this life. And, you know, once we're done, we'll go to AIT. We'll be trained with Christ for a millennium. Be learning all the teachings of Yeshua and come to the, you know, understanding that God deems fit and necessary for us. And then we're in the big heavenly army. You know, we're in the big heavenly community. But if you spend your whole life blaming others and you spend your whole life competing against others, you will ultimately be last. In your life against yourself you'll stand before God and be the worst version of you with 99 others above you other potential versions of you on the podium higher than you and you could have been higher on that podium against yourself but you were so worried about everybody else that you didn't focus on the things you needed to focus on with you you know in the way that I see people treat others is the way that I know that they treat themselves. And, you know, treat others how you want to be treated, you know, love thy neighbors, you love thyself. It's true. It's true. Because the way that you love yourself and the way that you are patient with yourself and the way that you encourage yourself and the way that you endure things within yourself is the way you'll be with others around you. It's the way that you'll react with them. It's the way that you will treat them. And it's so true, you know. I've said this before, but it's, it's a great example to make it make sense. In an airplane, you know, when the cabin pressure drops and the masks fall down, you got to put your mask on first. doesn't matter if you have a child. doesn't matter if you have a, a, a toddler or a baby or an infant. It doesn't matter. you got to put yours on first. got to make sure that you're in the fight, that you're able to stay in the fight, that you're able to be able to help others if you don't got your mask on you might pass out putting that mask on on your daughter and your son or on your wife you got to put yours on first you got to take care of you what did god say take the freaking log out of your eye before you go take a splinter out of somebody's stop worrying about everybody else's splinter take the log out of your life come on you know, and stop blaming other people. It's you. It's always been you. It's always been you. And yeah, it's a big mountain. You're a big mountain. It's intimidating to look at and be like, man, I got to move that. Yeah, but don't focus on the scale. Just little by little. Just start making progress. Just start being better. You know, be conscious. Be honest with yourself. You know, don't don't run. Don't shy away from the difficult truth. The truth will set you free. And like Stephen Guy said in their You Are Your Own Worst Enemy podcast, you know, before, before joy comes pain. You know, before glory comes pain, suffering. Christ on the cross, glorious, glorious ending afterwards, glorious beginning afterwards, you know, glorious destination, difficult, horrible, painful, suffering of a journey. But what's worth it to you? Do you want to pay for eternity? Do you want to pay? Do you want to be cast away from God? Do you want to be cast away from God for eternity by choice? 
and just play now and have fun and be happy and be nice and be a liar and be wicked and be sinful, deceiving, insecure. You want to live your whole life insecure? Like, do you want to live your whole life like with a mask on trying to trying to just mask the issues or do you want to conquer them? Defeat them, solve them, overcome them, and then put masks on and save and rehabilitate people for the rest of your life. Your own children, sprout good seed, tender, like, you know, tending them from the beginning, protecting them from the elements, the harshness of these things, from all the pests and bugs that try to eat away at your fruit. Like, if you get you together, like, you can help other people. Like Steve, my mentor, you know, and Guy. And, you know, they have mastered the fight within themselves, you know, to where they can help guys like me that need help. You know, they can help Joshua's and and all these other young men that need help, you know, and if they weren't able to defeat themselves, then it would be the blind leading the blind. But when you get you right, when you master your own enemy, you can help people. You know, you got to walk alone first, though. You got to endure yourself. You got to face yourself and you got to stick it through. You're ugly. <laughs> You're really ugly on the inside. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, puberty's an ugly period of time. You know, pu- puberty, some people get real ugly. But then they get real beautiful. They get real handsome. You know, they, they, they develop and they come out looking all right. You know, you're going to find that you're not all that. You're going to see that you're not all that. You know, open your closet and clean it out. Stop just shoving everything behind that door. Somebody walks out, oh, your room looks great. Oh, hey, don't go in there, though. Why? Well, that's my closet. Well, what's in there? Everything. <laughs> well, when's the last time you've looked at it? I don't know. Well, if you haven't looked at it in that long and that's all your junk, I really don't want to look at it. So are you really going to get in a relationship with somebody when you have all that crap in a closet? Are you really going to put that burden on someone else to help clean that crap? That's nasty stuff you've been hiding your whole life that you haven't conquered, that you haven't fixed, that you haven't faced. Are you really going to selfishly bring someone else into your mess when they've done all of the cleaning on their end, when they've prepared themselves on their end? Not all things hidden will stay hidden. They'll come to the light. Maybe not in a year, maybe not in five, maybe not in ten, but they will come out. And if you're selfish, you're going to hurt other people. So stay alone, stay single, focus on yourself. Stop bringing other people into your mess. Cut it out, stop being immature, stop being scared of yourself, face yourself. Not all males are men, and not all females are women. You want to be a man, face yourself. You want to be a man, fight yourself. You want to be a man, conquer yourself. I'm on that track. I don't know where I am. I'll be humble. I'm not a, I'm not a man yet. But I'm on my way. I'm a young man. I'm 26, but, you know, if I was on the path my whole life, I would have been a young man at 18. But sadly, my growth is delayed and stunted a little. So I thank God for the military. It might help. You know, speed up. Help might help me catch up a little bit. (laughs) You know, might help me. You know, I might need to go through combat. I might need to go through intense stress, intense warfare, intense anything to kind of turn that heat up on me a little bit and get that water boiling a little quicker. But I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful for wisdom and that he shared with me. And I'm grateful for men in my life that are able to break down these things, make them real plain and simple. 
And I'm just glad to be able to share it as well. And I hope you guys, you know, have got something from this. And I hope that you begin to start looking within yourself all day, every day. And question things. Be honest. Look from a look from a third person perspective real quick. And just look at you. And when you do something, watch what you do and ask why you do it and try and figure that out with yourself. But you got to be honest. And you also need someone to help you see yourself. You know, I wouldn't be able to grow like I'm growing and do what I'm doing without someone like Steve and without someone like Joshua now too. You know, people to see me from a different perspective and help me see myself. I can't see my back. I can't see the back of my head. I don't know what's going on back there. I need someone to tell me what's going on. Ooh, what? Hey, Parker, you got some, you got some nasty little thing growing on the back of your freaking head. Whoa, what? What is it? Tell me. You know, like, <laughs> I'd rather know what I can't see than not know it and just act like it's not there. I want to get help. I want to get better. I want to, I want to fix these things. I want to be whole. I want to be complete through God, through Yeshua. You know, and the truth will do that. So you got to surround yourself with people that are going to hold you accountable. Quit having yes men. Quit having yes women. All these affirmations, all this garbage crap that this wicked little Western world is all into. You're not that. You're not great. You should start negative affirmations. Man, I'm not great. I need help. I'm broken. I'm lost. You know, like for all of you people in the world out there that don't believe in Christ yet and haven't submitted your life to God, you need negative affirmations. You need to be on yourself. You know, you need a drill sergeant. You need to look in the mirror and be like, golly, I'm a wreck. Because if you're never satisfied, if you're never content, if you're never content, You'll always progress. You'll always grow. But if you think you're all that in a bag of Cracker Jacks, you're, you've plateaued and you'll never grow. Your skin will change. Your hair will change lengths. You'll go through things, but you'll never grow. Everything else about you grows. Your fingernails, your skin, your hair. But your soul doesn't. Your mind doesn't. And that's up to you. But... As for me, I'm grateful that God has helped me see these things so that I can be better for myself first. Well, even, well, I mean, we want to get real with it. For God first. Ultimately, for God first. That's how I can be, come better for me. I ain't going to cry. Cause I, I I get emotional when I think about these things because it's I God has been so good to me, and He's just so good. Period. That I don't even deserve to be on this path, but I receive it, and I just know who I was. You know, I know who I was, so to see where I'm heading is real encouraging, and I know that when I get right. And when the time is right, you know, Father will bless me with more responsibility and more blessings, potentially a wife and children, and I'll have to be, you know, ready to help them conquer themselves and face themselves and, and stand behind them like God stands behind me and like God strengthens me and like God leads me. And for you young men out there, Follow God so that you can once lead, so you can then lead, you know. Follow God so that you too one day can lead. And, uh, yeah, hang in there. Stay encouraged. You're not alone in this fight. You're not alone in this walk. You know, if they hate you, just know they hated Yeshua first. If you're being persecuted for Christ's sake, what a blessing and what a joy. But if you're 
if you are uh, not in a life or death fight with yourself, you know, start the match. Start the round. Put your gloves on and get fighting. And most importantly, as I often am reminded, and I thank God for Stephen, don't be so hard on yourself. Be patient with yourself and just hang in there. This is a lifelong fight. Don't expect it to be over in 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years. Just keep going, okay? Keep going. You know, I would say put the put the roof at 150 years. You know you probably won't live that long. But if you prepare for 150 years, you'll be set for a fight 80, 90, 100. But just hang in there, okay? There's glory on the other side of this life. Submit yourselves to Yeshua. You know, submit yourselves to the will of God. Keep his mitzvot. Follow his laws. Strive to keep as many as you can with a pure heart. You know dang well you can't keep them all. Grace is the only way that we can even be reunited with our Father. You know. Salvation is a gift of God so that no man shall boast in his own works. So you can't earn your way to heaven. But it doesn't mean because you have been given grace that you can just then do away with the law. That's not how that works. God's law has not been done away with. You know, Yeshua did not come to abolish it. If you know about Pesach, keep it. If you know about the Shabbat, keep it. If you know about the high holy days, keep them. Honor them. If you love God, love Him. Don't just do the minimum. You know. If you guys, like I said, haven't seen the video, you are your own worst enemy on Prophet Street. Watch it. I'll pop it up again right here. The link is down in the description. Please go check it out. If you stayed through this video without watching that first, I highly recommend that you go watch that. That was the root of this inspiration for this video. And I just wanted to elaborate and share my perspective on it with some of my experiences and a little bit of <laughs> wisdom I could offer, if any. So hopefully you got something from this video. Um, and hopefully you stay inspired. Hopefully you lock in and just get to work on yourself, okay? Put that, for, put that construction sign up under construction. We'll open soon. And just lock in, okay? Those things that you love and that those passions that you might have that God might have given you. Just just hang in there. Just put them off for a little. Just delay, okay? Keep honing in. That, f that wife, that family that you want, that job, that life. Put God first. Focus on you. Honor Him. Make yourself holy and set apart. And present yourself as a beautiful offering to God. And watch His response to you getting your life under control. And really getting that self-control you know, under control. So what a blessing it is to have this opportunity to, you know, make this video and for you to sit here and listen to this. Uh, God has not given up on us yet. And there's still that purpose out there for us. If we're not dead, there's, there's still something that he has willed for us. Our purpose isn't done yet. And uh, that's encouraging. Okay, so hang in there. Encourage those around you. Lift those up. You know, live like the Lord. Let people see the light of God. And don't keep that from them, okay? Be patient and just live out your faith, okay? And the rest is in God's hands. So I love you. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. I don't even know what time it is, but uh, tomorrow is the last day of Pesach. Uh, God has allowed me to get the day off for work. I know that maybe some of you out there, you haven't been afforded that opportunity, but that's okay. Do the best that you can to honor it as best as you can, when you can, and give God the glory. And I thank you all for watching, and I thank you for watching. I don't even like saying all because it makes it very non-personal. Like, you're watching this, so thank you. Thank you for supporting this channel, and you know, hopefully you love God more than you love my channel. And maybe that's why you watch these videos, because you like Sharon and the things that he teaches us. So, But the Lord be with you. May he make his face shine upon you. 
stay encouraged, keep it up, keep up the good fight. And uh, God willing, I'll see you again soon, okay? So until next time, be safe, and the Lord be with you. And shalom. Hallelujah.